Nancy, three hot men. <laughs> on Peace Island in Casco Bay. It is, in fact, a museum of these little things, umbrella sleeves, that most people lose. I'm Nancy Free Hoffman, director and curator. I started it 20 years ago when I realized I had a few lying around the house. I asked my friends who gave me theirs and eventually stole one from J.J. Newberry's across the street. <laughs> the mission of the museum is, pay attention, appreciation of the mundane in everyday life, it's finding wonder and beauty in the simplest of things and knowing that there's always a story behind the cover. These are two of our interactive exhibits, the Petting Zoo on top <laughs> and Mad for Plaid, where you can lift up the kilt, I mean the umbrella cover, and see where it comes from. Anyone can donate a cover. Oh, I forgot my middle name. It is the number three. I changed it 20 years ago because I got the idea from a typing error, and I love the fact that it translates. Now these are Agent A and B, who donated this umbrella cover, stolen from the uh, banquet retiring CIA director, Leon Panetta. He did do the notes. Anyone can donate a cover, and there's an accession form where you write the story that goes with the cover. Here are interns, Ellie and Noah, cataloging, tagging, and using museum methods to keep track of our umbrella covers. We put the year, the donor, and which number in the year that cover came in. The exhibits are created by the curatorial staff, me, and um, they include controversial covers. The long and short of it here, Betty and Richard, who became fast friends despite their height differences, and the, um, oops, do I have a button here? The tiniest one in the museum, the Barbie doll cover, next to the long one here that's from a market umbrella. Another controversial cover is the Jewish cover. It may not be an umbrella cover, it may be, as indicated here, a golf club cover. It may be for a small tourist scroll, another theory is that it is a Hanukkah sock. <laughs> it's up to the viewer to determine. Now, people who donate covers tell their stories. Sometimes the people are the story. They have been, this photo has been altered to protect their identities. These people I met on a trip, they said, We want to donate a cover to your interesting museum. I said, Where are you from? They said, New Jersey. <laughs> covers from 44 different countries, including a World Soccer Cup cover from South Africa down here, Mozart's Home from Salzburg, Austria. I like to think of my museum as a little United Nations of covers where everybody's getting along. <laughs> Jim Brady, who was very excited to donate a Boston Red Sox cover, waited a year after finding the cover and coming back to Peaks Island to donate the cover. Now there's another exhibit that was curated by a friend of mine called UCM 2000, where every uh, cover is made out of a specifically different material. This is the centerpiece of the collection, the gum wrapper chain umbrella cover, and the, cura the creator used gum to stick the handle on the cover. There's a plastic bag recycling cover, a bulletproof umbrella cover, a porcelain one as well. We're open summers only. The hours are 10 to 1 and 2 to 5, except closed on Wednesday and Sunday afternoons. Um, but check first. I've got um, email and phone numbers here. Counting for the Guinness Book of Records. Oops, I'm not supposed to say that. Because we've been rejected three times, but we keep trying. And we'll be counting again on August 21st at 11.30 a.m. You can all come out and help count colors with my enthusiastic staff. We're now doing a weekly weather report on YouTube and our Facebook fan page. Here we see Emily in one of the reports, reunited with the Barbie doll cover of her childhood, and Athena B, a museum intern and docent, with the Japanese massaging fingers umbrella cover. <laughs> the museum annex is open daily. <laughs> this houses the international wing of the collection. <laughs> countries are on display. There's a lot of good reading in there as well. The rock umbrella in the upper left is also in there. Most people notice, and 
and several of them comment about what umbrella covers look like. I plead no contest. There has been a lot of, believe it or not, international publicity, including National Public Radio, BBC Radio, and the Weather Channel has done a segment about the Umbrella Cover Museum. I also play the accordion. I'm a cabaret singer and um, do a song called In These Shoes, in which I wear those shoes. I do love to sing in different languages and my accordion plays in all of them. <laughs> I'm in two, two local bands, the Kaskovic Toolers on the left, playing klezmer music, Eastern European Jewish folk music, party music, Yiddish songs and songs from the Holocaust, and the main squeeze accordion ensemble, doing also international folk songs and popular songs from this country. I'm proud to say I've written a book recently called Uncovered and Exposed, The Guide to the Umbrella Cover Museum. It has 52 colored illustrations and the stories behind the museum and behind the covers, and it really focuses on our mission of celebrating the mundane. There will be a Kickstarter.com project about it soon. Students, adults, international visitors, camp groups, over 2,500 people came to the museum last year. Ooh. And we always end our tour with our theme song, and everybody is welcome to join in. 